Hello, 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 everybody. It's Cece from CC Restyle. And I am going live today um, on my page. We're working on this little Bombay chest. Okay, medium sized Bombay chest here. And um, it was actually very plain. As you can see, pretty plain Jane. It's got this script printed on it, but other than that, there's no real details or anything fancy on it. And we want to put fancy on everything, don't we? So we're just going to go ahead and fancy it on up with Would You Bin Moldings. And as you can see, I've already begun to put a few on there. Um, I will show you. Um, well, let me walk you through this project real quick. Hey, I'm on my business page, right? <laughs> Yeah. Okay. I just realized, hopefully I didn't go on my personal page. Okay. So, um, okay. So this Bombay chest I got from, um, um, you know, secondhand, it's a hooker, hooker brand. And so it's really nicely made. It's very, very well made solid, but it's got the, uh, the old Ikea finish on it. That's this thick, I'm not even sure exactly what, just, um, thick non-wood surface. It's like some sort of, um, I don't know, I don't even know, some sort of laminate finish of some sort. But anyways, um, so I am, I decided I wanted to make it look fancy. So I'm adding some wood you bin mold. And as you can see, I've got all of these to choose from. So um, I'm a brand ambassador for wood you bend moldings. And um, so they send me some products to work with, but I get to choose which. And I knew I wanted to do this project. Um, so I, I requested lots of little, I call them swirly guys. So these really pretty things. And um, I've got lots of these pretty things. I call them swirly guys or scrolls or whatever. And then some of these too. I just asked for a whole bunch of these because my intention on this piece, what I want to do is create um, a sort of frame, framing in the center here. So as you can see, I've started up top and I've started at the bottom and I added some keyholes, which are also wood you bend molds. If you're not familiar with the wood you bend moldings, um, what they are is they're um, precast appliques for your furniture, your art, uh, you can put them on just about anything. Um, but they're made out of real wood, so they have all the properties of real wood. Um, you can sand them, drill them, paint them, stain them. Um, you can apply heat and they become bendable. So I can conform them to the surface um, of this Bombay chest, which is curved, um, or anything else that's curved. You, when you heat them up with a little bit of heat from a heat gun, they'll, you know, they'll get soft enough to conform to a surface. Um, you can also cut them, so if I wanted to go across, say I wanted to go across my drawers here, I could do that, and when I apply some heat and warm it up a little bit, I just take a sharp knife and I could cut there. Um, so that I can have the design I want and the drawers will still function. So they're pretty magical. I'm kind of loving these things. Um, and they have some really neat designs. Um, I just especially like the swirly guys, like I call them, because you can use them on just about anything. Um, so with this piece, I cleaned it, um, and then I'm wood you bending it, and then I'm gonna slick stick it. The reason why I left my hardware on for this process is because as I'm building up my frame with the wood you bend, I want to um, I want to make sure that I'm not interfering with my handles or possibly the handles are part of the frame and the design. Uh, I just want to make sure whatever I'm doing with my appliques or moldings, I want to make sure it makes sense with my handles. So after I get um, my, my design done with my wood you bend, then I can take off the handles and then continue my prep. But I'm leaving them on for now. Because as you can see, they kind of match the swirly guys. So I'm going to possibly use them, you know, in my design. The handles is the handles is part of my design. And then of course, you oh, I always have to add keyhole mold, molds. I love, love, love keyhole molds. I don't know what it is. I've got a thing for them. But um, they look a little crooked on the screen because um, the curve of the Bombay chest. But they're not crooked. I promise. Um, so. We're gonna go ahead and get cracking with um, the rest of our frame that we're building here. And I don't exactly have a plan. I don't have a pre-design planned out for exactly how I'm doing this. Um, so I'm just kind of holding things up and see what they look like and whether I like them or not and what I, what I think about whether that will work or not. So 
that's kind of, I'm just kind of doing this on the fly, to be honest. So what you need to apply your wood you bend molds are some wood glue. I'm using tight bond wood glue. Um, I also like to use Gorilla Wood Glue um, if I'm out of tight bond. Um, I need a little brush, so I'm just going to use a small art brush to apply the wood glue to the back of my molds. And then I like to pour it into a little cup. This is a little paint cup that you get at the craft store. You can use anything really, but I like to pour a little bit of my um, wood glue into this. And then I can just brush it on straight out of the little cup. It's easier than trying to stick the brush into the bottle of glue and then it gets all over the brush and then all over your hands and then everywhere and it's really crazy. So um, I'm going to pour a little bit of <coughs> my wood glue into my cup. Oh, and you also need a heat gun. A heat gun is a heat gun. You need that and a knife helps, especially if you plan on cutting um, over the drawers like I, like I mentioned that you can do. Maybe we'll get to do that. I'm not sure. As I said, I don't have this design completely thunk out, so I'm not sure. I might go over some draws and have to cut those too. Not sure. Um, so thanks everybody for stopping by and saying hello or tuning in or not saying hello and tuning in. Doesn't matter. Um, hopefully you all are staying safe and uh, keeping your social distance. Um, yeah. We're all just doing the best we can to kind of get through this, right? So, um, all right, I'm gonna go ahead and grab my brush here. Just a small art brush is fine. I mean, if you really wanted to, you could just glue directly onto the back of your piece um, with the bottle, but like, I wanna make sure that I have the whole surface or backside of my uh, mold covered with the glue. Um, and it's a little bit cleaner and you control it when you're using a brush. So that's why I like to use a brush. So here's what I'm thinking. Okay, so you can see I've got my top pieces on and then I've got my bottom pieces on. Um, I had an idea that I think, I don't know if you can see, I'm gonna scooch out just a little bit so you can see. Um, hey everybody, thanks for tuning in. Just uh, getting bendy on a Saturday. So, I've got my bottom two moldings on and I see this little curve here and automatically I'm thinking, mm, that little curve could use some moldings. So I'm gonna try to look and see which one feels like it will fit the best. But I think that you know some of these little swirly guys here, like they call them, will fit perfectly on, you know, look at that. So I could do I could do them like that, or I could bring them in a little bit more. I, I might want to bring them up a little bit closer because I want to make a frame. So I might do something like that there. I could do that too. I don't know. Hmm. We'll see here in just a second. We'll see what I decide. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and grab my art brush and I'm going to... I'm gonna paint the back of my molding basically with my glue. I mean, in, in, in essence, you're just painting it on on the back. You don't wanna go so thin that it dries up on you immediately, but you don't wanna go so thick that when you apply the molding, it just squirts out of the sides. So you just gotta get a nice, fairly thin layer on there, um, but not too thin, not so thin that it dries up on you. So cover the back and, um, so one thing about the wood you bend molds is that um, you can apply them, like I said, to curved surfaces with a little bit of heat. You can also apply them to flat surfaces, but even if you think it's a flat surface and that your mold is flat, you still want to use the heat. A, it helps it to adhere really well, and B, sometimes these moldings are not completely flush. Um, sometimes there'll be a little corner lifting up or um, turned up and they're not completely flush. So you wanna make sure that you use heat regardless of whether you are um, on a flat surface or a curved surface. So I think we're just gonna go ahead and go right like this. I think that looks like just about perfect right there. So I'm gonna grab my heat gun and I'm sorry, it's gonna be a little loud for a second, but <clears throat> gonna apply some heat. Without burning your finger, try not to burn your finger. So 
So I'm just going to apply some heat. You don't need a whole ton of heat. And you can kind of feel when it starts to soften up because it'll lay flat. And once you get it to lay flat, you want to just kind of clamp it. Once you get it heated, nice and heated up, you want to just kind of clamp it with your hands for a minute to kind of hold it in place. Make sure it's nice and flush against your surface. Just for a minute. Not even a whole minute, but that's probably good enough. And bam, it's on there. It's on there. So I'm just going to give it a little bit more heat to dry up that glue just a little bit. And then um, we'll move on to the next side. Okay, so this swirly guy here that we use has an opposite swirly guy, just like that. So I'm gonna make sure I got my opposite one and that we're putting it in the same place as this side so it's fairly symmetrical. And then I'm just gonna paint my um, glue on the back like I did the first time around. Not too much, not too little, kind of between, you know, like Goldilocks and the Three Bears. And then we're going to, let's see, make sure we have that right in place so that it's fairly symmetrical with the other side. It's kind of hard to hold it in, step back and see, but I'm thinking we're pretty close. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and start heating up this little guy. And these don't take terribly long to heat up. Some of the bigger and thicker moldings take a little bit longer. Um, and then some of the trims and thinner pieces don't take very much time at all to heat up, so you, you want to be careful not to burn them. Okay, so I'm going to heat up this side. You want to keep your heat moving, because these do burn. These will burn if you hold your heat gun in place too long. So now I'm going to just clamp that right in place with my hand for a moment. Ooh, hot. And these do get soft. They get soft enough to bend, um, but they don't get soft enough to, get, to lose their shape. So it's not like they turn into Play-Doh and you can just like, you know, reshape them completely. That, that doesn't happen. They just get soft enough to where, um, you know, they can conform to your surface. So voila, there we've got our next two pieces. So now, now I kind of got to figure out what I'm going to do next because I haven't really figured that out yet. Let me see if there's any questions real quick. Hey girl, hey. Hello everyone. Oh good, I'm glad you have, every, every woman should have a heat gun. Yes, it's script and I don't know what kind of script. It looks like French, but it's going to be, um, nothing here soon. So, um, nothing ease. That's what it's going to be soon. Not a ease. Okay. So I'm thinking we chug right along towards the top. I think we just go back from bottom to top, bottom to top until we get to where we want. So let's see. So let's try a couple of these guys, almost like mirroring the bottom. Maybe, maybe we should just try to mirror the bottom. I think that sounds like a good plan and throw these little guys here. Um, just like we did here on the bottom. So, uh, yeah, I think that's a plan. So I want to make sure that I'm getting them right in, right exactly um, in the same spot. Well, pretty close to symmetrical anyways. And I definitely am going to need to apply the heat to get these bad boys to curve because they're totally flat and my chest here, my Bombay chest here has a curve to it. So I'm going to need to get these to get soft and bend and stick and do their little magical would you bend thing. So here we go. Got my glue all painted on the back. And then I want to 
I want to kind of hook, hook this almost like it's hooking on this piece. Because I make it a frame. I want it to be connected. So um, when I'm placing it, I'm thinking about, you know, it, I'm thinking about it like hooking onto that piece. Does that make sense? Just like that. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and give it some heat. And not burn my finger this time, because I burned my finger before, and that was not fun. Okay, so now it's softening up so I can press it on into that curve and get the other side. where I'm going with this, the frame that is taking place. Um, let's see if I can bring in a little bit closer. I'll try to bring in a little bit closer so that you can see um, the moldings uh, more, mo better, maybe. You can see a mo better if I bring you in closer. Hello, everyone. Thank you. I am um, working away at this little chest, trying to make it um, super cute or at least trying to make it a lot more detailed than it, um, than it came, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? If I can get this stupid thing to act right. Okay, so I'm gonna bring you in a little bit closer so you can see. All right, so you can see how cool these moldings are to work with. They're so fun, I'm not kidding you, it's like almost addicting, okay, so. All right, there we go. Can you see? All right, so now I gotta do this side to match and we're gonna make it somewhat, um, somewhat, somewhat symmetrical. In case you're just logging on, um, so this piece, I acquired it, it was pretty plain, um, no details or anything really, just a nice shape, um, just a nice Bombay shape which is what attracted me to it, but it no, has no details, which is kind of a bummer for me, but also lucky for me, I get to add my own details by way of wood you bend moldings or any kind of moldings that I choose, but I choose wood you bend for this project. And um, so I get to use these magical moldings on this plain piece. So I'm really turning a Cinderella, you know, what is it? Sleeping Beauty or Cinderella? Which one is it? It's like, is it Sleeping Beauty? There was her um, Fairy Godmother? stepmother's stepmother. That's Cinderella. Stepmother's. There was her stepmother's um, assistant. Stepmother's not assistant. Slave. Her stepmother's slave. Right. What is going on with my phone? I think I am. Okay, well, I can't really see in any questions or answers because, um, sorry, I can't really see any questions. My phone is going dark on me, probably because my battery is getting low, but, so I can't really see any comments. I'm sorry. If you leave a comment or a question, I'll go back later and I'll read through them and I'll answer any, but I'm just going to keep chugging along on my um, moldings here. So I'm going to add some heat to this guy.
clamp it in place with my fingers best I can. It's hot, so I'm not gonna wanna burn myself, but just kind of clamp it with my hand and boom, that's on there. That ain't going nowhere, that ain't going nowhere. So can you see? Oh my gosh, my screen is getting so dark. What is going on? Okay, now I can see, okay, now I can see questions. Okay, so I don't, oh, hey, hello everybody. Hey girl, hey. I don't know what color I'm painting it yet. I have not even thought about that. Um, I haven't even thought about, okay, I've thought about the design that I'm making with my moldings, but I haven't got it nailed down. I'm just kind of winging it right now. So the color that this is gonna be has not even popped into my mind yet. Um, so um, we can, oh, okay, you can see me and hear me? Okay, good. So um, I'm just gonna keep chugging along and usually in the process of prep, um, after my wood you bend moldings, I have to slick stick this piece. So I'm bending it and sticking it um, to this piece. And then usually during that process of the prep, and the slick stick and the you know all that a color will kind of come to me or a color scheme will kind of form in my mind usually during my prep so that's usually when I um... <sighs> oh thank you Sally Joe I think it's gonna be pretty sweet I'm trying to fit as many of these would you been swirly swirlies in there as I possibly can um, and as you can see in case you missed it at the beginning I've got I've got some to work with down here see that's what I'm working with here. So I'm just trying to place and, you know, make them look all nice and fancy. All right, so next, I think I'm gonna try to fit in these guys somewhere. And I'm not sure exactly what that looks like. Maybe it, they are kind of hooking around the hardware. Um, maybe, maybe I need to even um, heat it up and cut off this end and reposition it a different way. Um, because I can totally see this kind of, well, I can kind of see this coming on and hooking like that, maybe. But I can also see it kind of doing this too. And then maybe, I don't know, maybe we've got another one of these here. I don't know. What do we do? I, I really want to come down like this somehow. So let's just go ahead and start, let's just go, go ahead and hook this one kind of like that and we can start coming down. So we'll try it like that, see what happens, I think. See how some of the placement is just kind of um, holding things up and looking and seeing what you think is gonna look good. Um, it's kind of hard, ooh, I don't know y'all, what about this? We might have to go with that. Or maybe upside, oh, okay. I think, I think my answer is almost evident. I would like to do it like that, but see the hardware's in the way. That's why I left the hardware on so that we would know if it was gonna get in the way of our moldings or not. So I think I'm gonna have to do it this way, which is fine, because I'm so digging that. I'm digging that. What do you think? On that, bam, boom, boom, done. All right, so here we go. We're gonna go ahead and paint our wood glue on the back. Easy peasy, just like lemon squeezy. Um, if everyone, if anybody is uh, at home bored with going out of their mind, um, what are you doing to keep occupied? Give me, you should, <laughs> thumbs up if you're at home going out of your mind. Cause I know I am, well, I'm at my shop kind of going out of my mind, but today's the first day um, that I have gotten to not, not be around my kids in like a week and a half. So today's good. I'm not complaining. I have no complaints. Oh man. Yes. Oh yes. Friend Louis XIV. That's one of my favorite, favorite styles. So I take that as a tremendous compliment. So I'm just going to kind of put this on here. It kind of reminds me of the little holes on a violin. Um, they're called F holes. <laughs> it's true, they're called F holes, but that's what they remind me of, right? Violin, so I'm just going to, see how this is, 
My, my surface is curved, y'all. It's curvy and my molding is flat. What am I gonna do? Oh my gosh, what am I gonna do? That's not gonna work. I'm gonna add heat to it and it will become bendy. So watch the magic happen. Some of these thicker areas take a little bit longer to heat up, but that's okay. Just keep your heat moving so you don't burn your, your molding, which I have accidentally done before. Okay, so you can kind of see how it's starting to bend onto the piece. Bendy, 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 bendy. Okay, so now I'm gonna move on to the bottom. surfaces so like laminate glass mirror plastic things like that metal um, it helps your paint stick to those surfaces that are not wood or not porous um, and this is definitely not a porous surface so that's why I'm going to be using slick stick um, but I, I when I'm prepping I do my best to ensure that my finish is going to last so I did want I do scuff sand it up a little bit as much as I can even before I use slick stick Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and try to mirror this side and we're going to stick this bad boy. Let's see. I'm gonna do the best I, I can. Um, and I think. Come down just a little bit. What do you think? Do we think that looks pretty symmetrical? I can't tell. There we go. I think now it's better. I did turn it just a little bit. I think it's symmetrical enough. Kind of hard to, kind of hard to hold it up and stand back and look and see, but I think it's good. So I'm gonna go ahead and give it some heat to get it to get all bendy and, and warmed up, warmed up and bendy. And I can feel it starting to get soft under my hands, it's starting to conform to that surface. I can feel it already. So now you see how, see how it just is soft and molds, right? Molds itself right to that surface. It's magic. It's magic. I love it. I love it, love it, love it, love it. So now we're just gonna heat the top. You know, it just, whoo, it's hot, gets hot, y'all. But we've got to get it on there, so I'm gonna just push it on there, and now it, uh, now it's conforming to the curves of my surface, so I'm just gonna hold it on there just for a second. Make sure it's all on there good. And then I'll show you real close. So, see the, the front, of, the front of my Bombay chest is curved 
I'll see if you can see it from the side. See how, see how the moldings just curve onto the surface? Like, it's no longer flat. It just conforms with a little bit of heat. It's seriously amazing. Seriously amazing, seriously fun. So now I get to work my way down. So I'm wondering if I don't kind of mirror that down here and do the same kind of shape pointing up or even maybe go like that a little bit. Just kind of make it a little different from the top somewhat. And then let's see. So if we do that there, then we can kind of, I don't know, probably bring some of these guys in like that somewhere or like that. That would work. Or pointing up. Heck yeah, we're gonna do this. Okay, we're gonna do this. So I've only got a few more pieces left. So I'm painting on, if you're just hopping on, I've got my Bombay chest. It was fairly plain, nothing too exciting about it, it but it has a nice little shape, so I, of course, needed it and wanted it in my life. So I got it, and I was like, you know what, I'm gonna wood you bend this baby up. So I waited patiently for my wood you bend pieces, and I got all these swirly pieces, and now I'm building a frame around the front to create some detail. So it not only does it customize it, it creates detail and interest, and it's just, it's gonna be a lot of fun. So I think I'm gonna put this one like this, something like that, like that, or like that. Let's do like that. All right, let's do it like this. And the reason why I left my handles on is obviously so I can make sure that my design is not gonna interfere with my, my handle. So that, see how my molding is going to go over my, my drawers? I'll show you how I take a, a sharp knife once it's heated up and then you just cut right across. Like easy freaking peasy. It doesn't get much easier than that, you know what I'm saying? So let's, uh, yeah, so I'm going to do that right about here. So I'm going to paint, go ahead and paint on the back of my, the blue onto the back of my molding just like every other piece that we've done and all right not too much not too little too much will squirt out the sides and too little it won't stick so all right so i want to do this right around right around here actually yeah let's do it right around there okay so I'm gonna go ahead and heat it up so it's get it all adhered you see that see how it's like sticking off because it's not flat like the piece Don't burn your finger again. All right. So I got my bottom half nice and conformed to my curve. And I'm going to heat up the top half, make sure that's stuck on there, and then I'm going to take my sharp knife and I'm going to cut right through it so it opens with the drawer.
Okay, so now that it's nice and warm, I'm really bad at not burning myself with anything hot, so don't pay any attention to me. Got my sharp knife, and I'm just gonna cut right straight through the center where it, where it goes over the drawer, or draw. Boom, okay, so I just cut, sliced it right in two. Easy peasy, see, so now it opens. And then I'll probably, once that's hardened back up and it's not soft, I'll probably just sand that top a little bit, you know, so it's nice and smooth. Same with the underneath here. I'll sand that bottom so it's nice and smooth. But you get the idea. I'm going to add a little bit more uh, glue under here, actually. Make sure this little piece is stuck down. Get on there, little piece. He's being stubborn. He's being stubborn, piece. my piece now it's split in half and it can go right over my drawer my design can go right over my drawer so now I just got to repeat that on the other side starting with this one and then this one so we got to find the opposite which this is the opposite so it's gonna go right there right right there hmm can you see yes I freaking love these things um um, Kim, that is a great question. So, um, I would have to mark up my would you bend or my, the, my, the, my, the, okay, let me start over. Um, to Kim Adams, I'm using tight bond. You can also use Gorilla Glue or any kind of wood glue, but I prefer tight bond or Gorilla Glue. Um, and to Kim Thompson, the, she's asking, how do I justify the cost of using this mini would you bend on a piece? Um, um, so many pieces on one chest. And that's a totally fair question. It makes a lot of sense. So um, there's a couple of ways to go about it. You A, mark up, you know, I have a formula for how I price my, um, my pieces. So it's how many hours times my hourly rate that I put into it. And then my materials times, you know, I usually times them by three um, or something like that. Three, three and a half, depends. And that's the number I get to start off with when I'm pricing my pieces. So yes, this would be a very pricey piece, not only because of I'm using quite a bit of wood you bend, um, uh, which adds up, you know, but I also may have paid a little more than I should have probably for this piece. But at this point in my career, I like show pieces and I, um, I don't create pieces with the end goal of profiting off of them in mind, even though yes, that is what ultimately happens and that's the ideal situation. But um, since I do what I do, I use these pieces to um, kind of do my job and show what can be done. As, as a brand ambassador, our job is to show what can be done with the pieces. So. Um, how do I say this? I'm, I, I'm given a lot of these items complimentary in order to use them to show you how they can be used. So for me, um, that's my job is to show you and inspire you and, and use these things that will, you know, um, hopefully get your creative juices flowing. So my business is not built on, on selling my pieces and making money off that. Does that make sense? But for a person who who is, um, you know, in your business is just strictly furniture profit. Um, I would say, you know, you have to have the market that will pay for a piece at X cost. So if, if this piece was gonna cost say $2,000, um, my market in my city is probably not gonna support that but I sell nationally, I sell on um, Etsy, and I have clients, custom clients that are nationwide, so I can get away with making things on the higher end, if that makes sense. So 
but you know, if you if you don't think that you can get X amount to make it worth your while, then I would not suggest using this many. Um, if you don't if you don't think that you'll ever recoup that, or you're not confident that it would make sense for you in your business in your market, but for me. Um, most of my job is trying to, is showing you all what you can can do with these amazing products. So, and believe it or not, like I don't find the wood bin to be pricey. I think they're economically, I think they're um, pretty economical to be honest. Because a lot of times I create my own molds, which can be time consuming, and time is money. So if I charge <clears throat> my hourly rate for the time it takes me to create molds versus how much I can pay to have one in my hands that's already made. Um, it makes a lot of sense to buy them already made if you look at it in terms of, you know, time spent. I hope that, I hope that kind of helps or made some sense anyways to Kim who was asking. Yes, I, I, I agree with you, Chaz. I think that the more custom, the more you can charge, and so you can get your money back because, believe it or not, there are people out there who are looking for custom, one-of-a-kind pieces, and when you have that, um, they take notice, and they are willing to pay a little bit more. I'm not saying that that kind of uh, client base or following is easy to come by. It's taken me years to get towards the, you know, the client base that I, um, wants what I'm putting out. Do you know what I'm saying? It takes some time. So I'm not saying that's easy thing to do, but, um, <clears throat> but yeah, I'm digging this. Digging it. All right. So we're going to throw a little bit of heat back on this bad boy in the bottom. We get this one all nice and stuck on. All right. Ooh. Let's just clamp that on there with our hand for just a moment. And then. All right. So I'm going to put my other piece mirroring. Let's see. Which one is mirroring this one over here? I think it's this one. So we gotta put our other piece here. So we're gonna cut it off right around here. So we wanna make sure we get it fairly um, symmetrical. And I'm thinking. Thinking right about there. So we're gonna go ahead and paint the glue onto the back of our piece, just like we did all our other pieces. And nice thin layer, not too thick, not too thin though. I like to make sure I got all these little details or points that kind of stick out, because those are the things that, you know, if they're not stuck on well, it could snag onto something and rip the whole thing off in the future. And we don't want that, that would be embarrassing, right? Get it to a client's house and it snags on something and totally rips off your molding. Oh. Talk about mortifying. No, thank you. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and put that in its place. Just like that. All right. Add some heat. See it's sticking off there, it's rigid sticking off there because it's not curved, it's flat. But wait for it, wait for it, wait for it, wait for it. We're gonna get it to be nice and curved. See that? Ooh, now it's curved. Now it's curved. Now we gotta do the top, just like we did that bottom. Heat up that middle section a little bit again. 
take my sharp knife and I'm just gonna cut right through it, just like that. So now my jaws will open now. Woo woo! Check that out. Okay, so woo, I don't know. What do you think, you guys? Should I be done? Thank you. I think it's going to be pretty fancy too. I don't know if I should be done or if I should keep going. You know what I mean? It's like, do I stop? Do I keep going? Do I stop? I've got more here. I can add more here. I can save them for another project or I can keep going. Let's see. Do I keep going you guys or do I stop? That is a question of the day. I could put some here underneath these handles like that. What do you think? Do I keep going or do I stop? Do I keep going or do I stop? Do I just really mold this baby up? One big one in the middle, I could do that. I have a big middle, a big one um, in the middle, but I already got this keyhole here. I do have a, a big one I could put in the middle, but it's at home. I guess I could bring it in, or we could create our own big one in the middle like this. What do you think? Do we wanna go there? Do we wanna start going there? Create a little frame inside of our frame. Oh my goodness, I think we're gonna have to go there, aren't we? We're gonna go there. We're gonna go there. We're gonna get extra as extra gets, okay? <laughs> coming up, something coming off the lower keyhole. Like right here? Because we've got this down here. So I'm thinking maybe, I'm thinking maybe we just do a frame in the frame, kind of like this. No? Yeah, no? Okay, beautiful lenses, but something in the middle will look, yeah. I think that, um, let's see. Oh, I don't know. Okay, you know what? I'm gonna save my other pieces, because look at all these pieces I've got left. I'm gonna save those for another project, some another uh, mind blower, if you will. <laughs> I think I'm gonna go ahead and stop here I think we've got enough detail happening. I might, um, I might actually add, the only thing I think I might add, to be honest with you, is some of these down the side. Um, I might do that, I gotta think about it. I might add some of these down the sides, um, and I think that will get us where we wanna be. Cause I'm feeling like it just needs a little bit something else. Um, but I don't know, I don't know, maybe down the sides. I don't know, ah, I don't know. So, oh, uh, Tracy, the writing is gonna be gone, though. It's done. Uh, the writing on there, so this piece is, um, I have not done anything to it yet except apply the molding. So that script is gonna be gone, that yellowish, funky, um, co funky color is gonna be gone. I, I bought this piece this way except for the molding, so now you can see it, see, so, we're, we're, we're gonna be painting this bad boy up, so. <laughs> so I can't wait to show you. So after this, I'm going to, um, I think I'm gonna end up doing some on the sides, like I said, and then I'm gonna slick stick two coats. You gotta let it dry overnight because that's how it works the best. Um, and then I can't wait to show you this uh, sometime, maybe this week, I don't know. I don't know when I'm gonna get to get out of the house again to come in and work on it. Hopefully this week. So anyways, thank you all for... <laughs> can you hear that, really? You can hear my music? <laughs> uh, oh my gosh, you guys cracked me up. Okay, well, thank you for tuning in. I appreciate you. And be looking out for this piece, hopefully in the next couple days, or at least sometime this week, because I can't wait to finish it. Um, so thanks for hanging out and tuning in. High fives. I'll catch you catch tomorrow night on the Dixie Bell page at 8 p.m. All right? Bye.